Hey everyone, this is Karen with Walsh of Karen's Pots and Glass and welcome back to my home studio here in my basement. Today I'm going to take you on a little studio tour so you can see how I have set my studio up, um, some of the organization that I've done with uh, where I locate things, some of the tools, supplies, things like that. Hopefully it will inspire you if you are thinking of setting up a home studio. Maybe it'll give you some ideas on how you can do that. And also if you have an existing studio that maybe is in disarray, it might also help you give some get some ideas on how you can organize that a little bit better. It's taken me a while to get around to doing this. Um, I don't know if any of you are like me, like when company comes over and you just kind of like pick up this clutter that's around and you hide it when people are coming over. I'm a little bit like that. Um, I had to kind of do that here. So it took me a while before I actually got everything put away for you, my company, to come visit in my studio. So hopefully you enjoy this. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you haven't done that. And drop me any comments below if you have any questions. And here we go. All right, so this is the approach to my studio as I come down to the basement. I have a little half wall here where I made so my studio space feels a little bit more open. And uh, I the, it's kind of a collector of stuff that I probably should uh, organize out a little bit better. Over here, um, I have some of my glaze shelves. And you will also notice that right here I have my, uh, those are my studio shoes. I always wear specific studio shoes when I'm working and I have have like a little rug as well that I can occasionally wash if I need to. So I do try to keep my floor pretty clean. Um, right here, this is, let me come around this way. This is a new unit that I got. It's an air filtration unit. It's an EnviroCleanse unit. I'm going to do another video on that, but that's going to be something to really help keep the air and the atmosphere clean in here. Um, but I do do as much as I can to try to keep the floors clean, keep them mopped, things like that. So here is my work surface, my work table. Now a lot of people ask me, what do I put on my work surface? There are many different things that people can do, but I want a work surface where, where clay is not going to get stuck. Now I happen to be using a very heavy duty canvas that has very little texture to it, and I wipe it down very thoroughly after every use. Some people do not like to work with any uh, textured canvas, they prefer say like birch plywood which is a great idea um probably when i need to switch out this canvas i'll probably go to the plywood idea uh, just a nice kind of a cabinet grade plywood um, you can see that i have up here on my little half wall i have my scale so when i am weighing things especially things that are consistent you know i'm making cups that are always going to be the same size i want to make sure that i'm weighing them i have a few different uh, bevel cutters there that um, i've shown in some videos i have a variety of tools here i've got some caddies that i made another little caddy here and then i just have um, like a plate hanger. I have a variety of things. I do have things all over. So these are some tools, different things that I use. Um, this right here, this is a, um, a creative industries. Um, no, is it creative industries? Yeah. Uh, it's a sticky bat, um, a CI, uh, sticky bat. Those are really cool. Um, I, there are links to all sorts of things in the uh, video description. So I have some shelves up here. Um, I, I have, almost just a miscellany of maybe tools and some pots that I need to work on right there. Let's look at the tools that I use most often though. I have a heat gun hanging here on this little rack and behind it I have a, um, what do you call those mixers? Like the oh, immersion blender? I th think that's what it's called. I just got a, an inexpensive one at Aldi. It was a really good deal and it comes in handy for mixing jars of glazes. Um, this is just a little Ikea rack that I have with some tools in it. So um, that's a qu uh, you know quickly at hand. I've got like a little turntable. Um, I do not have a nice fancy Shimpo turntable. I have a less expensive student grade kind of an Amico turntable. Um, this is my scut wheel. I've been featuring this in my recent videos and you can see that it is standing. I have thoroughly enjoyed standing up while throwing. Um, it's really, really nice uh, on my back. Um, let's talk over here about my sink. I have, you know, different wet things that I will need all the time, like my whisk, my measuring cup, uh, that red thing right there, that's a mop pad that goes with my mop that's hanging there. I do have a, 
a mop and a broom. The broom I only use um, to really get the big chunks and I really am very careful not to mix up uh, air or anything, but I mop um, in here all the time. Uh, under my sink, let's talk about what I have there. Oh, I should have moved this stuff, but I have a Glaco trap that I use. Um, if you've never heard of a Glaco trap, I do have a video on this. This is really cool. There might be other manufacturers, but I do like this one. It's real simple. I was able to install it real easily. This is like an overflow when, when I want the water to drain out of the trap. This allows the sediment to catch in here. So I do use a, a double bucket system up here though. Like I have my uh, a dirtiest bucket, my cleaner bucket. And uh, when this gets real sludgy down in there, I'll pour off some of the water. My goal is to get as little clay down my drain as possible. So that is why I have the Glaco trap. If you have a home studio, don't allow clay water to just go down your drain. Um, if you are maybe going to wash an apron or something, I always pre-rinse it before I put it in my washer. Again, I don't want to get clay in my in my uh, water lines and stuff. I realized that I forgot to mention, after I pour that water off the sludgy stuff that's in the bucket there, then that stuff in the bucket, I, it's going to be waste. I'm not going to use it. I can either dump it outside or in the case of something like this, I could put it like in a bisque bowl and let it completely dry out. You know, outside I put a towel over it. Um, to keep stuff out of it. But then when that hardens up, then I can just dispose of that in the trash. But that is not going to be sludgy stuff that I would keep and reclaim or anything. I have just a little uh, shelf over here that's next to it um, where I, you know, might dry my tools on that towel, uh, kind of handy. Uh, let's talk about the things that I have hanging up over here. I have my drill driver. I use that all the time in here. Maybe if I'm, uh, you know, drilling through pieces, um, you know, for greenware, I'm making holes, or I just need it in the studio to, to work on things. Okay, so let's talk about some of the things I have hanging up here. This little gizmo, this is, uh, it's, this is like, um, it's, it holds a disc on a uh, angle grinder, and I have that mounted so I can put varying uh, polishing discs on it and it has holes that I'll put it on my wheel head. I will show that in a future video of how uh, I, I do that. I know I've showed some in the past, but I'll show how I use that new thing. I have a Giffen grip here that I sometimes use for trimming. Here, uh, these are the, um, it's a great uh, uh bat system. It's from Batman out of Canada. There are a lot of other bat systems that I've uh, heard about and I haven't tried them. Like um, Dirty Girls has a, what looks to be a great bat system, but I, I, again, I've never tried it, so I can't really speak to it that much. Um, down here, this is a shield that I use, that I put around my wheel when I trim. So I, you can see I have a second wheel. This Pacifica wheel is one that I uh, I got before my scut, and I replaced, if you ever saw any of my older videos, I used to have a motorized kick wheel. It was a Thomas Stewart motorized kick wheel. Beautiful wheel. It was great. Absolutely nothing wrong with it. It was just too loud for me to do demos, so I ended up by um, getting the Pacifica so I can uh, do demos, and then the Scut, which is just a fantastic workhorse, um, and this is what I've been doing my new wheel series on. But anyway, this shield that I have back here, that's actually uh, just... Um, what do you call them? Cutting boards from like the dollar store, which is pretty cool. And I'll show that in another video uh, coming up too on uh, doing trimming. And you might notice that in addition, uh, I have bed risers underneath the bottom of my Pacifica wheel. I like to have it raised just a little bit. So as I'm sitting there, I'm not leaning over so far. Um, I don't have a lot of lower back problems, but I'm just trying to prevent it. Uh, over here, I have my kiln log that you should always have your kiln log uh, if you have your own kiln. There's a, a, another sticky bat, and then I just have like a little sieve uh, right there. I also keep my other, my like my diamond core polishing pads. Man, if you've never tried diamond core uh, pads, they are 
super sweet. D Diamond Core has some fantastic um, polishing and uh, sanding uh, types of things. Um, and let's see, I keep little clips there and everything, things that I just need all the time. And up above, I have uh, some of my storage for uh, pots. I need to get some of that stuff listed on Etsy because I'm just really far behind. Um, I've, I've got my glaze brushes over here. I have some miscellany tools over here that I use. And then you can see I just have some buckets with some dry stuff that I still need to uh, reclaim. I have some kiln things over here. Like I have a, a bigger kiln posts, smaller kiln posts, um, patties. I keep uh, pre-fired patties here. Um, some more patties up on this shelf and then I have like squeezy bottles and things like that over there uh, some of my half shelves I keep over here full shelves I keep there you can see I have that one shelf that's fully broken uh, I I just can't bring myself to throw it away at this point um, I keep my gloves hanging up over there those are my gloves for the the kiln they're the gloves so if I, I, I need it for high temps keep my big giant rolling pin there with my slab sticks, which I've used the slab sticks in most all of my slab videos. Um, I do have a slab roller at school and I used to have one at home, but I sold it because I prefer the rolling pins and the slab sticks. I have a small rolling pin that I keep here just for small things. Um, and then my scut kiln, uh, you may have seen my videos on my kiln before, but I have an overhead um, venta kiln system. Uh, scut, of course, does make the environ vent, which is really good. If you see this little pipe, that's my old environ vent. Uh, when that conked out, I ended up by getting the, um, the overhead one because I, tended to notice I had a little too much heat down here and the venta kiln for me was venting out a little bit more of the room heat uh, as it came out of the kiln. Um, now I do want to mention one thing. Uh, I do have a video that I'll be showing soon about my new touch screen on my uh, on my scut kiln. I have a new touch screen and the one thing that I want to emphasize is, is if you have a kiln please always, always, always read your owner's manual. It is so important. Don't just fire and kind of wing it thinking that you know what to do. Please be diligent about it. It's a, it's, it's a big safety issue. Now, I will point out one thing too that if you see over here, my kiln is uh, plugged into the wall. I do recommend if you can do it, hard wire it in. It's really actually safer if you can hard wire it in. And then I have shelving, which I really need to finish. I have an enormous number of bisque fired pots that I need to finish. Um, these are a couple of my uh, drape molds. You may have seen those in some of my videos uh, that I've shot before. They're the bamboo tools, drape molds. They're really sweet, uh, cool, uh, molds. I'll put a link in the video description again if you want to see, um, if you want to go to Bamboo Tools website and see some stuff. And then just coming around over here, I know it looks super cluttered, doesn't it? Okay, and then over here, these are really, I consider these my glaze shelves and um, I've kind of got them sorted out. Um, I have some Mako up here, which I've got a video that I'll be doing on the Mako stroking coat, which I was extremely pleased with the um, my coyote glazes, some more Mako stoneware glazes, more coyotes, some of my Amoco glazes down here, and um, yeah, just, just some miscellaneous things where I maybe have things in little jars and stuff. And let's see. Oh, I didn't mention over here. So underneath my workstation, let me move my chair. I have, in addition to my boxes of clay, I have my reclaimed clay. So I have a I have several hundred pounds of reclaimed clay that I did last spring. Um, I use a white uh, stoneware, a white B-mix uh, stoneware, sometimes with grog, sometimes without. Um, and these two bins right here in the middle, I want to explain what those are. These are damp boxes. You uh, may have seen me talk about damp boxes in other videos. The one in the bottom is really more characteristic. Um, I just ran out of room. That's why I had to go with the top one. You see in the bottom here, this is plaster. So I have like an inch and a half or so of plaster that was poured into the bottom. And then uh, once the plaster sets up, you can add water and set your pots on top and it will keep your pots moist 
for a very long time. Um, I mean, I've kept pots moist for months and months and months. So um, it's a great way to kind of maintain your pieces. If you are thinking that you can't uh, get to them right away, that's a, that's a great thing. Also, I think this, if I'm not mistaken, is this, yeah. So there's a, <laughs> that's full of like a, my brownstone ware from school. I brought some of those home to uh, finish up um, here at home but that also has plaster in the bottom so that damp box is just a big bucket because it has plaster in the bottom um let's see let's go over here okay so we've talked about my glazes and everything and then I want to show you I have my pottery closet so when we redid our basement a few years ago um, I made a, a closet with shelves so I can store my stuff and like the, the where the little red tags are those are uh, tags of what should be there and I know I need to kind of redo those I do a line of National Park mugs so I need to like uh, replenish I've, I've gone through a lot of those so that's my pottery closet and then coming around over here this is this is a little messy so i apologize for this um these are my coyote bucket glazes that i just love the coyotes right and then over here this is my kind of my holding station that of things that are ready to get photographed and then i have my light booth so a light booth is a really nice way if you're trying to do some photography with a neutral background um, you can just put your pieces in there and it does some uh, really nice photography I do have a few lights here um, that work I need to get my my old one it's open there it's not functioning now because my bulb is out I need to if I can only figure out how to get the bulb out I'll be happy and then I can do that and then over here so this is again this is new organization that I've done recently uh, this year I have not uh, had this area but this is my packing area so I have some boxes ready to go and um, I have a video that I do on double boxing uh, my pots I always double box I like to err on on the side of caution and I've got my packing tape and my uh, scissors there oh and I used a, I always use a ton of recycled bubble wrap and stuff so hopefully this is helpful and I have my bin there of my receipts for tax purposes and everything because I keep all my receipts and um, when I'm shooting my videos uh, I am always using a little supplemental light too because I did find that sometimes my videos were just um, a little dark so I, I have a little ring light that I use and yeah that's my studio so if you have any questions uh, you know just leave it below and I'll try to answer them and um, maybe it inspired you a little bit I really enjoy these uh, like these orange hooks that I have on the wall to like uh, support some of the the heavier things just to get them up you know so they're not just sitting around in stacks and everything and um, it's a lot of stuff down here I, t I do tend to have a lot of stuff but I know where it is and I use it so one thing that I wanted to mention as well is the wheeled carts that I have things sitting on wheeled carts to me are one of the most uh, key things so like over here underneath my glazes and everything um, I use a lot of wheeled carts so as I am cleaning I can clean more thoroughly by just scooting out the cart um, scooting it uh, to get underneath it if this wheel were difficult to clean I would also have it on wheels but um, the, the wheels are really easily I can I can scoot them around my old kick wheel I definitely had on a big wheeled cart and that was really nice Hope you enjoyed my tour and uh, again, like and subscribe and we'll see you next time.